Uh, well, probably quite unusually because we've got such a broad portfolio. Um, you know, we, we actually have a, a big diversity in the, the roles that we're um, looking to fill. So we've everything extending from, uh, you know, uh, desk-based uh, support roles, field service engineering roles, um, high-end solution architect roles, and also some sales roles. So it's very, very broad-based. I suppose the, the areas that we're finding most difficult to fill um, would be some of the more complex enterprise um, technology roles in maybe around the storage stack, um, the data recovery stack, the data management stack, um, the skills in that area, um, it's, it's, it's not a role that um, you know you can immediately fill with a college graduate. It requires 10 or 12 years of experience in the right area. And one of my observations today, funnily enough, is um, that uh, in the areas where we find it quite difficult to fill roles, we haven't had very many people come over to us um, and talk to us about an interest in those areas. There's no doubt about it that there's a, there's a capacity issue in terms of technology skill sets around the city of Dublin uh, in, a, in IT and in technology. But I, I mean, even a, from our own business perspective, we've found it difficult in the last two years to find you know, the right skill sets and the right numbers of people with the right skill sets. But I, I, I do think, uh, John, there are opportunities to cross-train people, particularly people that are involved in what I call logic, you know, that have studied areas that involve logic. That's the key skill that is needed, I think, for technology. So, uh, civil engineers, quantity surveyors that are out of business on account of the construction area being you know, depressed at the moment. I think there are opportunities for those guys and girls in particular. When I talk to t digital companies, uh, broadband access and the capacity and speed is a key issue and it's a key one that comes up again and again and again. So we've been, ta we've been looking for 100 meg uh, symmetrical, same speed up and down, 100 meg. Uh, I think that's actually one of the key, and it ain't that hard to do. Yeah, Swerve is a, a startup in the online game sector, so we provide services to game developers to allow them to adapt the game as people are actually playing it. So we discover what their players are doing inside the game, and we allow them to make changes on the fly. But we're here trying to find some engineers. We've got a lot of open engineering positions, both on the product side, server side, architecture, and DevOps, which is a real hard talent to find uh, here in Ireland. I think the big language today is Java. You know, a lot of the web services, particularly cloud-based services like us, rely on having a, a Java infrastructure at the back end. So I'd say number one is Java. We're also seeing a lot of people, uh, we're needing people with skills in scripting languages like JavaScript, uh, Ruby on Rails as well is a very popular framework. And so, but I think what we're looking for are generalists, people who can adapt to new technologies as they come along. Uh, isn't it funny, this sort of IT industry, we've seen cycles, you know, it's come into favor, it's gone out of favor, and I think, uh, one of the dangers is having a very short-term view on what's happening to an industry. IT is here to stay. It's going nowhere, and the more and more people are using mobile phones, they're going online, so the requirements for people with those sorts of skill sets uh, is going away. So I think a career in IT is a very safe career. I suppose, first of all, um, there is jobs available. So that, that's a great thing to say, and the, se the sector has shown resilience through the worst recession in, in living memory. So that's great. So, so people feel a little bit better about the technology sector and filling these jobs. But uh, I suppose the jobs that, that kind of become a, a struggle, if you like, and, and it's obvious because all the Irish companies are telling us, are that there's little expertise jobs that people who have the talent find it easier and safer to go to one of the big multinationals. Now, we must never knock the multinationals. What they do in this country is fantastic. But we have to be a little bit different then as smaller companies, emerging companies. And what we found in order to try and capture the expertise in QSAT where I am and for the various routes that we want to travel, we have to bring them and show them the journey and, and help them sculpt and create the journey as opposed to being part of a big unit that, that sort of uh, is in a safer environment but maybe doesn't have that entrepreneurial uh, push. You know, that, that's the difference that we, that we show. You know, obviously you have to compete on salary, etc. but you know, uh, to, to, in order to remove them from the safety of, of a multinational, for us, the idea is, come on, bring us on the journey, you be a player. I, I know the football world, you know, and, and we need 11 captains in, in a, on a soccer field at times, and, and that's what we'd, you know, we'd be asking uh, people in QSAT to help come and help us. Like, from where we are as a company, and just for example, we've got a nice, we've had a great start in life, we have a nice bedrock, um, a foundation there that allows us now to specialise and go after, you know, select niche markets. Uh, the, I'm here today, mostly we're, we're about to start or launch um, a maritime broadband department. Now, 
it, it, we, there's no reason why every boat in every harbour in Ireland shouldn't have full broadband capability and mobile telephony capability. At the moment now we've about 22 people in our main office in Blanchestown, we, we've 12 people in Cork and we've about 18 installers around the country. So, so they would have, we would have started with six installers, four in the call centre and eight of us out in Blanchestown. So it's, it's growing, it's emerging, it's bubbling along and, and we're now feeling confident after, after you know, sort of our, our successes today, we're now feeling confident that we can go again. And, and I think that's the message coming from the sector in general. You know, as the recession is, is hitting everyone, as the negativity is out there, the technology sector in Ireland is, is going from strength to strength. And, and speaking to the other heads of the companies around here and listening to what they have to say, they're all saying the same thing. The last six or eight months, the technology sector has gone crazy. It really has. And so we, what we have to do is be ready for that. And, and people shouldn't feel bad about us bringing in expertise from overseas to upskill where we have, because that will make us stronger in a very short space of time. Science uh, is one of those areas that is, you know, booming at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, Ireland has put a huge amount of investment into science in the last 10 years. Um, but in terms of the gender issue, you know, enough women reaching senior positions in science. As far as I'm, if I can tell, there, there seems to be a point where, you know, is it a glass ceiling? Is there, um, are there other reasons why, why women are maybe going to higher roles in, in, in the science uh, infrastructure world? It's a very good question actually and um, very timely because at the moment it's actually um, the equality issue is a grand challenge in Europe and so we're being charged to, to look at it more closely on a national level. So the Irish Research Council has been very involved on a national level to, to kind of look at um, why this might be the case that there just aren't the women in the higher levels in the academic um, fields or the researcher fields. What you tend to find is that there's an even split at the lower levels and then for some reason, whether it's um, work-life balance issues, whether it's a confidence issue, trying to promote yourself is not really something that comes very easily to a lot of women um, and we're really working to try and provide more uh, role models at the higher levels because like that if you can see where you're aiming it makes it a lot easier. So it's a very complex issue and in that regard there are a number of things that can be done to kind of help and um, internationally what seems to work quite well is a mentoring type uh, program. So this focuses on a number of the issues that I mentioned, uh, not only the confidence kind of issue, but um, also that element of having somewhere to kind of um, go and talk to about what it is you want to do and have a look at someone who, is, who has done it um, themselves already. Uh, one of the, the very interesting points that kind of comes across is that if you're going to go into um, this kind of field research, which is very much like being an entrepreneur, you really have to have the support. So not only do you need the sort of support network, but if you're going to go and try and do both the family and the kind of career thing, you need someone that's going to help and value yours and their careers. Um, in some regards, you could look at a researcher and an entrepreneur as being very similar. There's a very similar mindset that um, has to be applied to either um, researching a, a question that is um, basis in either scientific or sort of uh, humanities, social sciences, and that you look at the, the problem, uh, gather the facts, and then make an informed decision. Uh, and as a researcher, you're constantly looking for funding to try and um, help yourself be able to answer these questions and um, fund your project. When you're an entrepreneur, you're also looking for a question. You're also trying to gather data together to try and see, well, is this idea something that could be feasible in um, a commercial sense? And then you have to um, do research in regards, well, do I have a customer base? is there going to be value for money and could I roll this out on a sort of a grand scale and so you could actually see that there um, really needs to be a case of alerting uh, researchers that they have this already in them and it's really just um, more of a kind of concept uh, turning point than actual skill base that they need to sort of um, uh, adopt or, or change.